name is Dr. Timothy Lawrence. I'm County Director for WSU Extension in Island County, and I have been keeping bees or working with bees for over 50 years. Today we're going to be talking about colony collapse disorder and all of the variables associated with colony collapse disorder. And there are over 61 variables that they've identified as relating to colony collapse disorder, none of which are the definitive cause. Primary concern is a rural mine, but we have interactions with pesticides, we have pathogens, we have all kinds of uh, things happening with bees that we're just starting to understand a little bit about the complexity of this issue. Well, one of the biggest concerns that we have is nutrition and nutrition associated with loss of habitat. So making sure the bees have habitat other than the one to five days when you need them in your orchard is an important component. So however we can do that, you know, there are genes that don't upregulate when they don't receive natural uh, nectar coming in. So all of these variables associated with the diseases, the pesticides, and nutrition are all contributing. So it's, it's a complex issue. We may just be in a new normal where the cost of bees is going to be very high and the, the, the trouble with beekeepers trying to maintain those colonies is going to continue for some time. Well, we're, we're currently looking at uh, bee bread and wax to see if there's uh, elevated levels of neonicotinoids in non-agricultural settings and seeing what, uh, how important that is. The problem with neonicotinoids is that what makes them good from an environmental standpoint in that they are in the plant and are throughout the plant and therefore we're not having to spray as much as we had to in the past with some of the, uh, the older pesticides, but that fact that they're in the plant, in, plant affecting sucking, piercing insects that's where the bees are then exposed to the pollen and to the nectar, and the pollen and nectar, because that's where the neonicotinoids. There's some interesting study that's not even published yet, where it shows that bees are preferentially go to plants that have neonicotinoids in them. They like that neonicotinoid kick. And so they're actually attracted to those plants more than plants that don't have neonicotinoids, which is an interesting finding. Um, so, but you know, it's a low level. Neonicotinoids are not good for bees. I can clearly state that. But if at field realistic levels, are they at high enough levels to cause a problem? And are they the sole issue? 